Well, firstly, thank you for giving the opportunity to work with my patients and being better safety in our community in Doncaster. The vaccine is absolutely safe, and I think there's no better guarantee to say I've had the vaccine myself uh, in there. And the vaccine has been well and truly being researched through various levels and stages of uh, assessment. And I believe up to 45,000 people were initially trialed to make sure there was safety in these vaccines. And we have full millions of patients now, over 20 million who've been vaccinated in Britain. And Britain is leading forward to it. No, not at all. Not in this country. We don't have that. Uh, I'm aware it's entirely free, as in line with the NHS, free at the point of care and delivery. You will be sent for in due course. The way COVID works is the older you are, the higher the risk. If you're a male, you have a higher risk. If you're black and ethnic minority, you're a higher risk, as it were. So given the fact you are younger down the age, as you suggested. You're going to be getting it in due course. But the good news is they believe everybody should be vaccinated by August, September in this country. And I said, well done. Well, the first thing I'd advise is if you have checked on the Gov website to say that you're due for it and you should have been sent for, I would strongly urge you to contact your local practice, GP practice, which should be friendly and able to advise you where you can have it. The vaccinations are coming through the system. They're coming not every day, but they're coming in every week, or every couple of weeks to come in. And there are mass vaccination centres who offer that as well. And I dare say you'll be booked in very quickly to have one if you're eligible for it now. Well, like everything in life, there will always be something that's negative in, in that. But that doesn't mean it's true. Uh, we need to look at science in there. And there's always been people who, who cry, as the world is flat in there. But the reality situation, the world isn't flat in there. And we know that. Likewise, with science uh, and progression, in this case, the vaccines have come on with significant safety features. I would not be worried about at this stage. I would have the vaccine and I had the vaccine to prove it's been safe. Yes, I think there's a lot of issues of the Bain community, and I've spoken about this before, uh, both in the media, BBC, etc. There's been a significant suspicion in Bain communities because in the past they've been used without the permission for experimentation. For example, syphilis was introduced to black men in America and to see what happened to them in there over a period of time. The Tuskegee experiment, as they call it in there. And people feel very concerned whether they've been experimented on at this particular time. I would go out and fly the flag and say, Please, please take it. Whether you're white, bame, whatever you, your ethnicity is, it's safe for all to be. Well, firstly, it's important. It's for your own safety. It's for your own safety and the safety of your family and the wider society in there. COVID is a killer. We know that. We lost over 125,000 people have died in Britain with COVID. It's a huge number in there. And the last time we had the pandemic was 1918, when we lost over 260,000 people in Britain. And over 50 million people died in the world. So it's a pandemic. You need to be protected uh, against the particular disease. And not only that, if you were to get it, you would spread to other people in here. So it's not just about yourself, it's about your family, your society as a whole, and the country as a whole in there to have it. And also, there are other Western interests. For example, you might wish to travel abroad. I mean, the countries would be really fair to ask you to have, do you have a COVID free uh, health or have you been vaccinated in there? So remember, just not for yourself, it's for your family, it's for the nation as a whole.
as we understand, there are over 200 vaccine uh, strains of uh, uh, the, the, the variants. Variants are normal in anything. For example, in flu every year, we have numerous variants. And that's why every year the flu jab changes in there. And I dare say the coronavirus will have that. We have a few identified. We were focused on so-called the South African strain, the Brazilian strain. We have the Kent strain, which we've been looking at in there. But my understanding is the vaccines are still effective against those strains we hold at the moment and still the advice is please have your vaccine. But the good news is, should any other variants arise, like the flu, we'll be perfectly capable of tweaking the system so the vaccine will be effective against those. Well, not to my knowledge, and certainly nothing in the evidence suggests that the vaccine affects fertility at all. The vaccine works on the immune system. It does not work uh, on the testicles or the ovaries or anywhere else, which is connected with your fertility at all. Well, at the moment in Britain, uh, the system does not allow you to do that because we believe they have very similar efficacy. They work well together in there uh, uh, and the way they have it in there. So it will be up to the local vaccination centre on what other supply we have and advise you to take either of the two vaccines that's available in the UK now. No, there isn't. Now, vaccines are made from proteins, and proteins come from different sources. Uh, my understanding is, speaking broadly, there isn't such contents in those vaccines now. Yes, and my understanding is that the Muslim Association uh, of Great Britain, I think it's called, uh, has actually given a, a, a statement broadly supporting uh, the vaccination in the Muslim communities. Uh, I'm aware of many so-called pop-up clinics that come up in various mosques. And they're not just mosques, in the Christian churches. I've been to a Christian uh, church hall a few weeks ago in Kirkley's area. There's a mass vaccination center there. The Gurudwara, the Sikh area down in Bedford, are done a fantastic job. The Hindu temples are doing it. So across all centers where everybody's welcome into these places of worship, with distancing, of course, to make sure the vaccine is had. So I would say it's good for everybody. Yes, uh, current evidence has shown, the, the vaccination committee has shown, that it doesn't affect the baby in there, and it's perfectly safe to have the vaccination if you're breastfeeding a baby. Uh, at the moment, no. There needs to be further testing needs to be carried out, further trials need to be carried out. So at the moment, as you speak now, the advice is not to have if you're pregnant. No, uh, the vaccine will not alter your DNA. So it is basically um, produced to be able to recognize the protein uh, in, 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 the, in the virus. So your body can be able to react to that protein and produce it. It will not change uh, your DNA. The recommended uh, period is um, uh, you wait uh, if you've got a confirmed um, positive COVID, you, you wait for four weeks before you can come and uh, get your uh, COVID job. And, and we do have situations where people may have symptoms. Uh, um, if they do, get, uh, they may not be confirmed, they're not quite sure. You can still have um, the COVID vaccine. It will not have any adverse uh, outcome. But for precautionary purpose, uh, if you if you have you are unwell, wait until you recover before you can go and have it. And as I said, if you have got confirmed um, COVID, wait for four weeks, then you can go and have your COVID uh, job. The the government uh, it it's been the the vaccine has been licensed, such so that. Um, uh, People can wait up to three months 
before they can have the second job. So around uh, 11 to 12 weeks, uh, you you would you'd be invited to, to have your second job. Uh, and people can be actually book book when once you've had your first job you can book your second your second one uh, so around around just before th uh, three months you, you, you can you can have your second um, dose of uh, COVID vaccine yes as I said earlier um, people with symptoms um, can have uh, COVID vaccine. Uh, obviously, uh, if you want to kind of wait um, until you are better, uh, and then you can have the, the vaccine. That 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 is fine. But but liaise with um, uh, with your GP for 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 that. It uh, if you do get vaccine while you are kind of unwell for one reason or the other, it will not have adverse effect or outcome. So group group eight is a group of people who are um, 55 plus. Um, so recently, the government has come, is working their way through the priority groups. Um, those group those in that group um, have been sent letters uh, to come to vaccination centers. Now, some of those centers may not be local to you. Um, you can wait, but GPs will invite you in due course. Um, at the moment, they are working their way through through uh, the groups that are the, the, the higher group before that, uh, so that they can be able to come to the next. So, uh, in due course, if you cannot go to those centres, uh, your GP practice will invite you to to one which is local. Yeah. Uh, the the injection is intramuscular inside the muscle, so uh, one of the side effects people will uh, will uh, will experience some some may experience a little bit of bleeding from the injection side, but that doesn't mean that the medicine is coming out. Uh, usually, some plastic is put put in it, uh, and and also um, if you have any kind of condition, either bleeding problem. Uh, you would have kind of uh, the nurses and whoever is in the in the center there, the doctors uh, would check that out uh, beforehand, and and as a precaution, people will just wait a little bit to make sure that if there is anything that people there is help uh, medical help available uh, to kind of support you. So people people wait for about fifteen minutes before before they drive out. If there's anything that is of concern, that would be kind of addressed and and and, and looked at. So as I said earlier, the, reas the reason is um, um, if it is local uh, vac vaccination centers, um, it's not a GP individual GP practice. So there are clusters of GPs across across um, Doncaster where uh, centers are located. For example, in the central area, Keep Mode, um, and 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 similarly in other parts of the borough, uh, there are centers. So it's it's not in your GP practice, so you may have to go, but not very far. Um, so at least it, it is quite near to where people live. Um, so that's the reason why we have some clusters of centers across Doncaster where people can go to. And the, re the, other, the reason for that one is we need to have big centers which can allow people to keep distance uh, so that it's safe and, and you'll be given instruction when you come to those centers. Um, in terms of ensuring that it is COVID secure, people keep um, distance and you wear face covering, that kind of thing. So you need a big center. That's why you can't have it in your uh, usual GP practice. So it needs to be in one of those larger center where there is, the facility is more spacious and we can accommodate more people. For some reason, uh, most of the priority groups uh, have already been offered. For example, uh, certain key key work, frontline uh, key workers, but um, 
there are some keywords who have not been um, uh, in that category. We have we have heard about, for example, uh, why are teachers, for example, not included and so forth. Uh, the, 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 we are working based on the government priority list, uh, and that kind of is specified clearly. Some teachers might fall into those category just because uh, they, they they meet those um, priority lists either because of their age or maybe existing medical condition, so they are prioritized there. So if you are in one of those priority lists, check. Uh, and if you have been missed, check with the GP uh, to discuss uh, if they miss, you, if they miss you. There are some, some people who have not taken it up, uh, either because they are hesitant, uh, again, worth speaking with your GP, uh, discuss with the appropriate healthcare professionals, those concerns. Uh, it's important to emphasize uh, the, the concern tend to fo f features around is it safe uh, we are saying yes we it is safe it's been uh, rigorously um, uh, scrutinized before it is licensed uh, it is safe and effective yes so that this is referring to the recent news uh, where they've um, um, reported um, some cases uh, associated with uh, blood clotting. Um, it's, it's not uh, confirmed. Uh, those reports are precautionary. Um, we have our team here that looked into it. So they basically compared um, the rate of blood clot uh, in people who have received vaccination uh, and the general population. In fact, they found that uh, the, the uh, people who have received uh, have a blood clot is much significantly lower. So uh, our, our healthcare regulation authorities still affirm that it is safe. It, it, it does save life uh, and it is effective. So people should still uh, continue to receive their COVID vaccination. It will be kind of planned accordingly, so um, uh, so so that uh, if you get that there would be cohort of people. So if those who got their first vaccination first will be invited uh, first for the second uh, cohort of vaccination, and 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 it will be um, based on the centers around here. Now more and more more centers um, are, are getting uh, made available. Uh, locally, but in terms of capacity, but also potentially maybe things like pharmacies will be also coming in, in into play. So it's just basically uh, expanding the scope available for people to to get uh, the COVID vaccination. The evidence is that actually the first dose, um, once given, does. Uh, provides uh, protection up to three months. So actually, uh, you will be able to uh, have that protection within that, that period of time. So it, it doesn't change in terms of the, um, the schedule for vaccination for, for uh, whether you've got cancer or not. In fact, actually, um, the reason why people with, um, um, with long-term conditions have been invited also uh, as part of the cohort group is recognizing that they are at more risk of um, uh, severe disease or, or death. Uh, so um, the, the first dose does protect, protect you. Evidence shows that actually um, it protects up to that uh, three months period. And then having that uh, second vaccination within that period boosts your immunity. It doesn't necessarily put you at risk, even if you've got cancer, uh, by saying having it um, uh, the, 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 that uh, the, uh, the third the third month. So between between eleventh uh, uh, weeks and the twelfth week, you you will receive your uh, vaccination. Most important is make sure you get registered if you move to Doncaster, uh, with the view that. Um, uh, you're coming to live here, make sure you, you, you get registered with your GP practice and then they'll, they'll put uh, you in the system and, and make sure you get your second vaccination.